the markets have dropped quite a bit this week. There's a couple of things that are pretty big and are impacting the markets. One is that the Federal Reserve announced that they will be raising the Fed funds rate by 0.75%. That's a pretty significant jump and hasn't been done in probably about 20 years or so. So why does that matter? The reason it matters is because the Fed funds rate is the rate at which banks borrow money, which means it'll be more expensive to buy homes and to buy equipment for companies. Item number two is that we're dealing with some really high inflation. And so why does that matter? That matters because not only are the product costs going up, but also the labor that it takes to get those products made and the services that we get every day in restaurants and, and coffee shops and things like that. And then thirdly, fuel prices are really high, causing transportation costs to go up. So we're dealing with higher cost of money and we're also dealing with higher costs to actually run the economy. All of these things put together, in my opinion, will drive uh, a slowdown in the economy. The challenge here is whether the Fed can be nimble enough to actually get this right. And one thing I'll share with you is it is time periods like this that help you determine whether you are an investor or a stock picker. If you want to know the difference, we're going to talk about that in this video, as well as we're going to do a portfolio update so you will see transparently what this market move has done to my portfolio. We're going to identify the enemy of your portfolio and how you can counteract that enemy. And lastly, I'm going to give you 12 stocks that I am looking at this week for my portfolio. Four of them are going to be uh, stocks that I already own in my dividend growth portfolio. Four are going to be stocks that I already own in my dividend yield portfolio, and four of them are going to be stocks from my watch list that I think are nearing a place where it may be a good time to get into those. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned. Hey guys, Kevin Burgess back yet again with another video. I want to uh, go through quite a few things today, so we're going to move pretty quickly. The first thing I want to do is show you my portfolio. The portfolio took a hit this week, and as I was thinking through that, I had to remind myself of, of what it means to be an investor versus a stock picker. And so I want to go through that uh, with you today. I'm going to share a couple of articles with you that uh, I will put uh, links in the uh, comments below. And then lastly, I'm going to go through about 12 stocks that I think uh, are on my list for this week. What I'm sharing with you today is, uh, I believe, very important. I needed to go through this again, so I felt if I needed it, you probably need it too. So with that, let's get started. Okay, here's the portfolio for the week. You'll see that the portfolio is uh, down overall by $53,000. We got $1,100 in dividends this week, which is really awesome. But the, the market change in the portfolio, uh, it went down $54,000, 6.4% down on the week. And uh, the S&P 500 went down 5.8%. So we're not too far off of the S&P 500, but we still did not perform as well as the S&P 500. And you can see also that in this week, uh, both high yield and high growth stocks were both impacted. The market itself went down overall. There was really no place to hide. Now, on a year-to-date basis, what does that mean? It means that we are down $75,000 in market value, uh, which is 9.3%. The S&P 500 year-to-date is down 23.4%. So that puts us at about 14% better than the S&P 500 on a year-to-date basis. It is uh, good that we are outperforming our benchmark of the S&P 500. So the next thing I want to talk about is the enemy of your portfolio. This is a Morningstar article called Peter Lynch Timeless Investing Advice. I'll put the link to this in the comments below. It was actually uh, written in 2016, but again, it is timeless investing advice, so I think it does apply here. There's uh, one particular thing in here that I think is important for us as investors. He says the unwary investors pass in and out of three emotional states, 
One is concern, two is complacency, and three is capitulation. And this is probably the best way to understand it here. And I will just read this because I can't do this uh, any better than, than what this author has done. It says, he's concerned, this, that means the, the investor, that means me and it means you. We are concerned after the market has dropped or the economy has seemed to falter, which keeps us from buying good companies at bargain prices. When we buy at higher prices, we get complacent because we see the stock price rise higher. In fact, this is the time we ought to be concerned and check the fundamentals. Then finally, when the stock market crashes to prices below what we've paid, we capitulate and sell in a snit. So it's important to understand that we can be the biggest enemy of our portfolio. It's when we do what we feel, it's when we let our emotions take over that we can actually get in trouble in our portfolio. We should have our process in place that identifies quality companies that are growing their earnings every year, that are growing their dividends every year, and understanding what those stocks are worth so that when we get a, a time like this where there's a big sale going on, we'll know and we can take advantage of that discount. So the question is, are we stock pickers or are we investors? So the difference is stock pickers pick stocks that they feel or they think are going to move up in value. Investors understand companies, they understand their products, they understand their management teams, and they understand the valuation of the company. And they put their money to work in stocks that they believe are going to go up in value, not because they feel it emotionally, but because they have some foundation to it. I want to share one other article with you that I think is helpful for us during these times. So you can see here Peter Lynch was the uh, manager of the Fidelity Magellan Fund from the period 1977 to 1990, and it averaged more than 29% annually during his tenure. And it says here, so you would think that investors in his fund earned substantial returns during that time, but you would be wrong. The average investor in the Magellan Fund actually lost money. It says this return gap, which tends to widen during periods of market volatility, like we are in right now, is attributed to investor behavior, such as chasing performance and trying to time the market, which are both very costly behavioral mistakes. This is where we can be our portfolio's worst enemy. I'd like to share a couple of factoids with you. They, they even call them factoids. And it says, according to a study by Dalbar, the 20-year annualized S&P return through 2019, so that would have been 20, uh, 1999 to 2019, was 9.96%. In comparison, the 20-year annualized return for the average equity mutual fund investor was only 5.04%. There's a gap of 4.92% due primarily to poor market timing decisions. Then according to Morningstar, investors who stayed in the market for all 5,217 trading days between 1997 and 2019 earned a compound rate of return on an annual basis of 7.2%. However, this is important, if they miss the top 10 best days in the market, they would have gained only 3.5%. So you would go by missing 10 days in the market, you would go from an annual return of 7.2 to an annual return of 3.5. But if they missed the 40 best days during that period, they would have lost 4.5%. So the point of all of this is we can be our portfolio's biggest enemy. And I've heard it said like this, the more you handle a bar of soap, the smaller it gets. Well, the same is true with our portfolios. If we're buying and selling, trying to time the market, we are actually hurting our long-term portfolio gains. So the encouragement I want to give you today is that let's stay invested because there are going to be times when this turns around and we're not going to be able to catch the upswing like we would want to. So I also want to show you the 12 stocks that I'm looking at this week. So I normally show you my portfolio in total um, and, and you can see you know what that is but 
the portfolios I will show you today, I'm going to split between my growth portfolio and my yield portfolio. So the four stocks, the top four stocks for my dividend growth portfolio. So let me go through these from my worst performers to the best performers. Stanley Black & Decker is down 28%. I am planning that is one of my four dividend growth stocks that I am looking at this week. Uh, to add to the position. Best Buy, I'm down about 23% on it. It is uh, the second of the four that I'm going to be looking at this week. I'm going to be looking to add Apple, and you'll notice that my Apple shares are very small in comparison to my portfolio. If they drop back below 130, I'm, uh, I'm poised to buy some uh, of Apple. Also, Microsoft is in a really good place here, I think. I do plan to add some more Microsoft to the portfolio. And then lastly, Texas Instruments. It is down about 13% in my portfolio. So I am looking to add uh, on to Texas Instruments as well. And I'm also planning to do a video on Texas Instruments. But I thought this psychology of investing, given the week that we've had, was more important today than, a, than an update on Texas Instruments. So that will be coming soon. Now let's go to the high yield account and take a look at the stocks that I'm going to be uh, buying there. Uh, this one I'm going to sort by dividend yield because it is my high yield account. I'm going to look at adding more Philip Morris. You can see I just at started this position uh, I think last week and it's down 3.8%. I think it may be time to add some more to that. It's getting nearly an 8% dividend yield. I'm looking to add Maine, the Main Street Capital Corp. I'm down about 11.6% on it. The average cost per share is $40. And it's trading down around 35 So I'm going to pick some more of that up. The third one is Kinder Morgan. It was around $20 a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that the price is below my cost basis now. So uh, at a 6.9% dividend yield, I'm likely to add more of that to the portfolio. And then my fourth one is Prudential. It's down about 16% and 5.25% uh, dividend yield. I do plan to add more prudential uh, to the portfolio as well. Now I want to share with you four stocks that have been on my watch list for a long long time but were just in my opinion too expensive and their price now after all of these this market turmoil might be actually pretty attractive. So I want to share these four stocks with you and I'll show you their valuation using Morningstar. The first stock I would share with you is Colgate Palmolive. They are currently trading around 74 with a Morningstar's fair value of $75. Now they're not trading at a discount but they're certainly trading in a fair value range. Now their dividend yield is a little low uh, and their growth is also a little bit low, but they have a long history of, of raising their dividends. Definitely do your research and, and see if that's something that, that would work for your portfolio. Next, let's take a look at Illinois Tool Works. I haven't done a lot of analysis on this company, but I did have it on my watch list. It's currently a fair value of $205, trading at $178. So that gives us about a $28 discount versus its fair value. So it may it looks kind of attractive here at these prices. Uh, again, it needs some due diligence performed on it, but I wanted to point it out as something that uh, was back in range. The third stock I'd share with you is Parker Hannafin. Parker Hannafin has uh, decreased a lot here lately and is uh, their fair value according to Morningstar is $325 per share. Their last close was 236. So you're talking about uh, you know around $90 a share below what Morningstar has as their fair value. So again, needs some more due diligence, but it's something that may be deeply discounted. We'll take a look here in Seeking Alpha. We see they have a dividend growth history of 65 years. They have a five-year dividend growth rate of 11.3. Uh, 7% and their dividend yield is about two and a, and a quarter. So Parker Hannafin is something that I am looking to uh, possibly add to my portfolio this week. Lastly, we have Union Pacific. Their fair value according to Morningstar is 211 and their last close was 206. So I haven't done a lot of uh, due diligence on these four stocks. Those four stocks are Colgate, Palmolive, 
Illinois Tool Works, Parker Hannifin, and Union Pacific, but their trading range is back within a reasonable value according to Morningstar's valuation. So with that being said, let me know what you think about those four stocks. Are those stocks that you're interested in? Do you hold them already? Have you sold them? Uh, and if so, why? Let me know in the comments below what you think about those four stocks. I'd be really interested to hear that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The content was meaningful to me and so I thought I would share it with you. Let me know also if this has been meaningful for you. And with that, I will see you on the next video.